peoples welcome to my channel museum of geology today my topic is application of remote sensing in geological aspects or you can say the application of remote sensing in geology introduction is that there are types of uh, remote sensing number two basic principles of remote sensing and number three is applications in geology number four is conclusion and number five will be references so what is remote sensing basically remote sensing is the science of making interference about objects from measurements made at a distance without coming into physical contact with the object under study it is defined as the science of acquiring images refers to the technology employed for example electro optical scanning system processing what is processing it refers to the uh, pro uh, procedures that convert raw data into images after that interpreting interpreting converts an image information that is useful for human use remote sensors are mechanical devices uh, where informations are stored or recorded about the object or scenes under study they are classified as active or passive image or non image forming commercial or military types of remote sensing number 1 is passive remote sensing if the observation is made based on the electromagnetic radiation from the sun or self emitted radiance for example photography during daytime with the help of sunlight it is called passive remote sensing number 2 active remote sensing it is also possible to produce electromagnetic radiation of a specific wavelength or band of wavelength to uh, illuminate the object or terrain the interaction of this radiation can then be studied by sensing the scattered radiance from the target for example photography at night uh, with the help of flashlight it is called active remote sensing what are the platforms the vehicle or carrier for remote sensor is born is called the uh, platform the typical platforms are satellite and aircraft but they can also include uh, radio controlled airplanes and balloons and kites for low altitude remote sensing as well as ladder and cherry pickers uh, for ground investigation types of platforms number 1 is space borne platform you can see in the image number 2 air borne platform number 3 ground borne platform basic principles of remote sensing are that the basic principle of remote sensing is governed by two process number 1 is data acquisition and number 2 is data analysis what is data acquisition it comprises of the following distinct uh, elements number 1 energy source after their uh, propagation of energy through the atmosphere number 3 energy interaction with the earth surface feature number 4 airborne space borne sensors to record the reflected energy number 5 generation of sensor data in the form of pictures or digital information what is data analysis it involves examining you can say it involves examining the data using various uh, viewing instructions to analyze pictorial data or a computer to analyze digital sensor data reference data or ground uh, truth check is an essential part of data analysis another important point is that the acquisition of reference data involves collection of information about objects area or any phenomena that are remotely being sensed finally the information is presented to users Uh, who apply it to their decision making process process of remote sensing number 1 is that uh, radiation and the atmosphere number 2 interaction with target number 3 is energy recorded and converted by sensor number 4 reception and processing and number 5 interpretation and analysis the electromagnetic spectrum ranges from the shorter wavelengths including gamma and x rays to the longer wavelengths including uh, microwaves and broadcast radio waves 
There are several regions of the electromagnetic spectrum which are useful for remote sensing. The light which are, or we can say, the light which our eyes can detect is part of the visible spectrum which is small, uh, which is the small spectrum. There is a lot of radiation around us which is invisible to our eyes but can be detected by other remote sensing instruments and used to our advantage. The visible wavelengths cover a range from approximately 0.4 to 0.7 micrometer which is violet to red color. So it is the example of, uh, you can say it is the image of electromagnetic spectrum. You can see it. Interactions with the atmosphere. So viewers, there are four forms of interaction that can take place when energy strikes or is accident upon the surface. Number one is transmission. Radiation passes through a target is called transmission. The radiation. Radiation bounces off the target and is redirected. So it is the reflection. Basically it is the reflection. After that there are scattering. So scattering occurs when uh, incident electromagnetic radiation is dispersed in all directions from a rough surface. What is absorption? Uh, radiation is absorbed into the target so it is called absorption. The proportions of each interaction will uh, depend on the wavelength of the energy and the material and condition of the feature. Application of remote sensing. It, me it means that what we can uh, take from the data of remote sensing. So it is used in uh, agriculture, in geology, archaeology, oceanography, architecture, forestry, land cover and land use. Application in geology of remote sensing. So geology involves the study of landforms, structures and the subsurface of understand. Uh, you can say the subsurface uh, to understand the processes operating in the earth crust. Geological studies are not limited only to the earth. Remote sensing has been used to examine the composition and structure of uh, other planets. Remote sensing uh, is used uh, as a tool to extract information about the land surface, composition and subsurface. The multispectral data can provide information on lithology or raw composition based on spectral reflectance. The radar provides an expression uh, of surface topography and roughness. It is not limited only to direct geological applications but it is also used to support logistics such as uh, uh, route planning for access into mining area, uh, reclamation, monitoring and uh, generating base, uh, we can say the generating of base maps upon which geological data can be referenced or uh, superimposed. So the geological application of remote sensing are Mapping of structural, or we can say the mapping of surfacial deposit, bedrock, lithological mapping, and structural mapping, and uh, liniment extraction and mineral exploration, exploration of hydrocarbon, environmental geology, and geobotany, mapping and monitoring the geohazards, and, also, and uh, at the last, there are planetary mapping. So, these are the geological apl applications of remote sensing. What is structural mapping? So structural geology plays uh, an important role in mineral and hydrocarbon exploration and potential hazards and identification and monitoring. Structural mapping is the identification and characterization of structural expressions. Basically, structures can indicate potential location of oil and gas reserves and provide clues to potential hazards such as earthquakes, landslides and volcanic activities. The aerial photos can be used in temperature areas where large-scale imagery is used and particularly to map uh, potential geohazards. So viewers, it is the uh, structural map. You can see it uh, in very detail. Geological unit of mapping. So geological unit of mapping consists pr primarily identifying uh, physiographic units, emanation of determining the rock lithology or course stratigraphy of exposed units. Remote sensing can be used to describe the lithology by the color, weathering and erosion characteristics, drainage patterns and thickness of bedding. After that, unit mapping is useful in oil and mineral explorations since these resources are often associated with specific lithologies. What is the mineral exploration? 
the regional you can say the regional luminance and structure trends along with groups of uh, mining districts may occur the mapping local fracture patterns that may control uh, individual ore deposits the another important point about the mineral exploration is that detecting hydrothermally altered rocks associated with ore deposits and also providing basic geological data you can say there are different types of uh, maps based on the remote sensing data what is geomorphology it deals with different landforms that characterize the earth's topography origin sequence of elevation present uh, status and their uh, future trend unit space age you can say the unit space age and scientists conduct or you can say scientists conducted most geomorphic analysis by mapping generally topographic and geologic and by field observation and measurements eventually aerial photographs become a prime tool for mapping and interpreting modern macro geomorphology makes extensive use of global observation from spacecrafts that uh, employs a variety of imaging and sensing system for example vidicon imaging multi spectral scanning radiometers and radars hydrology is uh, inherently related to the many other applications of remote sensing particularly forestry agriculture and land cover most hydro uh, you can say the most hydrological processes are dynamic and require frequent observation remote sensing offers a synoptic uh, we can say the remote sensing offer a synoptic view of the spatial distribution and dynamic of uh, hydrological phenomena often uh, unattainable by traditional ground surveys example of uh, hydrological applications number 1 is flood and delineation and mapping remote sensing techniques are used to measure and monitor the uh, real extent of the flooded areas to efficiency target rescue efforts and to provide a uh, quantifiable estimates of the amount of land affected incorporating remotely sensed data into gis which allows for quick calculation and assessment of water levels damage and areas facing a potential flood danger after that there are the remote sensing based or you can say ground water prospects and recharge remote sensing based ground water prospect zone map reserves or you can say these map these maps are serving as a base for further exploration using hydrogeological and geophysical methods to locate well sites if remote sensing data are used at first level to uh, delineate prospe prospective zones and further follow up by the hydro hydrogeological and geophysical surveys so you can say the higher success could be achieved besides saving in terms of cost time and work remote sensing data helps in identifying suitable areas for recharge ground water or you can say for recharging ground water so we were is the conclusion is that remote sensing means acquiring information about an object or phenomena uh, from a distance without actually coming in contact with the object under study the quantity most frequently used in present day remote sensing system is the basically electromagnetic energy uh, emanating from the object to interest principally there are two types of remote sensing number 1 is active and number 2 is passive remote sensing it has two phases data acquisition phase and data analysis phase the underlying principle on which the whole remote sensing techniques is developed is that all objects on the earth surface have characteristic uh, spectral signatures Number two, the application of remote sensing in the earth science as a whole, especially in geology, is a manifold. So, viewers, these are the references of different books. I hope you have enjoyed the lecture, and thank you for watching my video. And I'll ask to all of my viewers, please subscribe my channel and like the video and share it with your friends. And so, let's meet in the next video. Thank you.